next webinar of our current series. Uh, my name is Cheryl Tipton. I'm here on behalf of Freedom Works, who are just one of the partners that are running this these series. I'll just pop some slides up, if I may, to share with you about where we are and what we're doing. Um, hopefully you can see these. Lovely. So here we are today on the last one, as I say, of series one, getting online. And we move over um, next month to series two, which is all about customers and marketing. Um, Creative Bloom and Shake It Up Creative are going to be taking you through marketing areas such as SEO, digital tools, Google Analytics, user experience, and much more. So if you've enjoyed these sessions and interested in the next ones, the booking is open at the moment through the link there, WSCC Eventbrite, and you can book for the next session. So do have a look at those. In the meantime, however, today, we're gonna to hear from three really great speakers. Lorraine Bell is joining us from Low Case and Rise, and she's going to talk about grants and funding. Gareth Sear is joining us from the Business Hot House, and he, again, he's gonna talk about business funding and some money they've got to give away. And then Karen Tyrrell is joining us from Coast to Capital, and she's going to update us on the digital champions. So, without further ado, if I may, oh, and I almost forget, um, we are going to have a networking session, which is going to start in about 25 minutes. And that's going to be organised by Bradley Hatchet of um, Network My Club. So we're going to have an open networking session. We're not going to be taking questions and answers throughout the next three speakers. But if you have got some questions, please do stay for networking because all our speakers and all of our digital champions um, are going to be at the networking session, so you'll get a chance to talk to everybody and I'll get all your questions answered. So without further ado, let me invite Lorraine Bell up onto the screen from Low Case and Rise, who's going to talk to you about funding. Lorraine, are you there? Hello. Hello. Yes, I am. Hello. Brilliant. Let me turn my camera and mic off and over to you, Lorraine. Good morning. So hopefully this is the bit where the technology works. So um, if you can... Hopefully you'll hear me. Um, so good morning. Oh, just good afternoon, isn't it? We've just gone into the afternoon. Not that the weather looks like it this, at the moment. Um, thank you for for coming along, uh, letting me come along today and telling you about a couple of initiatives that uh, run through the University of Brighton and University of Sussex. Um, I'll whiz through them. I'm representing two projects here today and um, that are delivered by the university and hopefully they were, may be of interest to you. So um, the first program um, is a, a very new program to launch in West Sussex. It's called RISE. Anything with uh, a funding these days likes to have a, a, an acronym in the title, but um, our acronym stands for Research and Innovation in Sussex Excellence. And the purpose of this program is really to try and extend a big open door to businesses in the county to come and work with their universities on innovation. So we've been uh, grateful to have received some um, last bits of the European Regional Development Funding and uh, very um, generously sponsored as well by the, uh, you know, um, the West Sussex County Council and uh, the boroughs and district councils too. So without further ado, I'll whistle through these and hope they all work. Okay, so um, the purpose of RISE and why, why it came about was to really try and support um, innovation-led growth across the county. Um, yeah, we've um, all been uh, somewhat battered by the recent uh, pandemics and Brexits and all the other things that are thrown at us in, over the last two years. And uh, this project's really around uh, supporting companies um, to look at innovation within their business and provide an intensive support program um, on that journey to not only recovery, but um, also hopefully future proofing in case we have anything else come our way. So um, it's aimed at small and medium sized businesses. So whenever you see the term SME, if you're not familiar with, with it, that means small and medium sized enterprise. And we, um, are working not only with the University of Brighton but the University of Sussex as well, um, two very well regarded research institutions, research based institutions. The objectives of the program um, so, what do we want to achieve and help businesses achieve through through innovation is to, to really help improve um, revenues, reduce costs, try and help um, develop new products and processes and services. We're quite a service based. 
um, county, but we've always got ideas for new productization of services and new processes to improve that. And, and more recently, we've seen lots of examples of changing business models. So um, maybe before you might have been working business to business and maybe looking now at business cons to consumer. And I know um, the Hot House programme will be talking next, but about the business support around that, what we're looking for in terms of innovation is, you know, really helping to research and develop those opportunities with regards to maybe some of the research behind those business models or maybe the research into the market opportunities. The, um, the programme covers four areas. Goodness me, what notifications going off? Um, it covers four, covers four areas. Um, in, in short, it's around exploring ideas for, for developing, looking at um, a, a very quick and short innovation audit to identify what the challenges are around innovation development within your company and what the opportunities might be. And then working with our experienced innovation advisors to support that idea to, through to commercialization. Are we looking at developing your knowledge to and embed that knowledge in your, your company? So um, using our experts, um, not only for that innovation team with RISE, but also across the two universities to look at providing that knowledge and embedding it, as I say, into your company so you can grow through to the future and to help develop new products and services in the future too. We provide peer support through the network. So we have an online portal where it's free to join. Companies can connect with each other. Um, they can share um, and connect through um, similar innovation challenges or through industry, industry sector or location. And they can build capability um, through accessing our workshops, our webinars, our masterclasses delivered by experts in industry, but also across in experts from our academic community. Um, I've had the fortune of um, visiting lots of the new pro projects and uh, uh, innovation areas across both Brighton and Sussex University, whether it's looking at future trends in sectors or future trends in technology, which the, the rapid speed that those uh, those changes are coming about are something that businesses really need to look into. And we'll be sharing the knowledge and expertise of those future trends and insights with the, the RISE businesses um, who, who join up. The um, say so the whole purpose of, of RISE is to really try and unlock um, and make it easy <laughs> to access expertise from a university. So it's a free service um, we uh, myself and the innovation advisors in the rise team do the brokerage as it were we find the right academic expertise across the universities for you to work with we help scope projects we do all the paperwork um, and we make those projects um, easy to to facilitate and develop with the university so if you've got an innovation idea and you want to talk to us about that um, and say it's an open door come and talk to us, no idea, stupid idea. It's uh, it's an idea to be unpicked and explored and hopefully um, capitalised on with, with this academic support. So um, I should just say, actually, my previous slide, the, the value of this support is up to £7,500. So whether that's made up of accessing the workshops and, and expertise or actually physically buying, we can physically buy out the time of academics to work on innovation projects. So some examples of that would be, um, it might be validating concepts, it might be um, uh, validating technology, it might be trial and testing um, a, a, pro a new product idea, it might be um, researching the market um, and doing some market analysis for, for your potential innovation idea. Um, we've helped companies um, look at process development. We're looking at supply chain development. Um, we're looking at productivity and automation in businesses. And this gives you a sort of flavour of some of the topics we're starting to talk to companies about. And say so that is, is a really um, great access of, of money um, and some financial support to your business. We, we don't give us a grant. It's not a grant that's going into your bank account. However, um, the, the transaction of accessing expertise is, is really easily um, made through this project um, and to, to get that value. 
some of the areas that um, we've worked with West Sussex County Council on that we feel that are some of the key challenges in our West Sussex business community. These are areas we're going to be specialising in. Some of them may fit with your business or I think some of these topics cover all sectors um, now. But when you're thinking about digital te technology and the, the things you've been covering on, in the Recovery and Rise programme. So um, this isn't an exhaustive list, but it gives you a flavour of some of the topics that we're going to be covering through through RISE. Um, what we do in terms of developing projects with the university, if you've got an innovation area that you feel you want some intensive academic ex expertise support to develop, then we scope up the projects and say we, we take care of all the or the um, paperwork behind the scenes, and you just get full access to having great conversations with, um, say, the academics on your ideas and, and downloading their knowledge and expertise um, to, to really helpfully, hopefully, accelerate that um, innovation opportunity. Um, so the invitation here is to come and join the RISE community. It's open to um, any businesses in the West Sussex Coastal Capital area. Um, businesses from outside of that area can um, join RISE and become a friend and still access some of the events and, and news. I say the programme is pretty much focused at West Sussex businesses to really help stimulate innovation um, and develop that competitive advantage, not only in your sector, but in, but in our geography in the UK. The second project, um, oh, so I've got a contact detail there and hopefully you'll have access to these slides after today. The second project I'm just going to cover through today um, is another initiative led by the University of Brighton, working with um, the University of Kent and um, I beg your pardon, the Kent County Council and um, Essa, Sussex County, uh, East Sussex County Council and Essex Council as well. So low case stands, another acronym <laughs> stands for low carbon across the southeast. Now the um, low carbon across the southeast program is delivered through the University of Brighton's green growth platform. Some of you may have come across this. This is a, a large low carbon and environmental network running across Sussex, and this network joined with other two, another two. Um, low carbon networks a couple of years ago to form Clean Growth UK. So if you are operating in the sort of clean and green space, I, I encourage you to, to join this network. But this network is um, leading on the low case project because of the nature of the low carbon and environmental um, expertise it has in there. The low case grant um, uh, is fantastic. And I've used to previously work with this program is up to £10,000 towards innovation, growth and energy projects um, for green sector businesses. But also any sector business can apply for grants for energy efficiency projects. So there's two grants. One is to say growth and innovation and energy efficiency. And then there's a wider grant for energy efficiency projects. Um, it contributes a 40% um, cost uh, towards the costs of, 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 of any sort of um, projects that are going to help the acceleration of your business or the energy efficiency of your business. So the SME has to put in 60% of the cost towards that. It's non-repayable. Um, it, there's no catch to it. It's quite an easy process to apply for. And businesses within... Um, the Southeast LEP, which is sort of the uh, location from East Sussex through to Kent Way, from sort of Lewis through to Kent, um, the coast capital area, so mostly West Sussex, but Brighton and Hove and a fringe of East Sussex. And then we have um, through to the Portsmouth and Solent region as well. So um, I say spread the word because there's a lot of money up for grabs. Um, this project funding will probably run out by March 2023, so I encourage you to, to apply. And I'll give us a couple of examples of, of projects that are funded, but um, we've, we've funded website development, we've funded um, um, exhibition materials and collateral, we've funded um, uh, IT and equipment for, for businesses to become um, more energy and resource efficient, efficient, which was uh, really popular during the recent pandemic when everyone was all of a sudden had to start working from home and online more. Um, energy efficiency projects, they can be anything from solar panels through to um, 
secondhand electric vehicle cars through to air source heat pumps, um, anything that's going to make your business more energy and resource efficient in the way it runs. Um, we, through the Locase program, you're handheld all the way through the process by the team. They help write your application forms and um, generally uh, you get an answer within a month for, for your grant and um, I say it's a very easy process to, to go through. Um, if you're interested in the low case grant, um, the contact details are here on the, on the screen. Um, I say we'll hopefully we'll be able to share these slides with you after today. And if you've got any questions, come and find me in the um, networking session. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lorraine. And we will be sharing the slides afterwards um, so you'll have access to all those links. But as Lorraine's just said, she will be staying um, with us for the networking session. Thank you, Lorraine. All I need you to do now is pop off your camera and your mic. Thank you. Um, can I next please welcome Gareth um, up onto our stage from the Business Hot House? Um, Gareth, are you there? I know you've had some problems with your camera today. Bear with us. I can hear you. You can hear us. We can hear oh, can you. you hear me then? Sorry? Can you, can you hear me? No. Just about. Sounds like you're coming through a tunnel. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Uh, Bradley, can you help at all here? No idea. Problem is, no idea why I can't get my webcam to work now. Okay, I'm going to just try a couple of suggestions, Gareth. Um, at the bottom of the screen, next to your camera on is there a little arrow that points upwards can you click that and maybe choose a different camera okay you seem to all right there we go we can see you there's one i can't hear you now so can you unmute yourself does the mic say can you give me a thumbs up if the mic says mic on there at the bottom of the screen hey. all right i can hear you great Oh, well, now I'm probably shouting. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Over to you, Gareth. Over to you, I, Gareth. Yeah. I tried to do it earlier. I've got no idea what um, what microphone I was on. So I do apologise, everyone. Um, click the share button. If you bear with me a second. I'll bring my slide deck up. No, that doesn't work. Okay, I'm. Uh, I'm not going to try and share my slides. It's. Uh, I've got a dual screen set up, and I can't get it to work. But can everybody hear me? Just. Uh, is that all right? I'm going to take that as a yes. Okay, so uh, thank you for inviting me along to speak to you. Um, I hope you've all had a um, a great series of workshops and uh, looked at your. Uh, you know how to. Uh, increase your digitalization of your organizations. So I'm Gareth, Gareth Sear, and I'm the program manager for a uh, project called the Business Hot House. We don't have an acronym, but it's the Business Hot House. It's all about creating growth uh, within businesses. So the Business Hot House, uh, hopefully a lot of you would have heard of it by now. It's um, six strands of support. And those strands of support cover things through from productivity and growth interventions within your business, access to finance, monetization of innovation. So it's kind of like the other side of the stuff that um, that Lorraine was talking about just now. Once you've gone through the innovation process, we can help you to monetize that. Leadership and management development, startup support. One of the key things I'm going to be talking about now is the grant fund and being able to access um, some of our funding to support the digitization uh, within various different aspects of your business. So the Business Hot House program is delivered by six different expert delivery partners. Uh, University of Chichester, who, I, who are the lead partner in this, and they are myself uh, as a program manager, and we've got a team of uh, other people that work within here. Uh, the Sussex Innovation Centre, an organisation called YTKO and WSX Enterprise. They're all about helping you to access our grant fund. Uh, Brighton Hove City Council, who manage the grant fund on behalf of the Business Hot House, and the Prince's Trust, who deliver business startup and growth support to, to young people. So the grant fund, managed by Brighton Hove City Council, has £2.8 million of grants to distribute. <clears throat> 
currently we've distributed around about 1.4 million pounds so halfway through it and we need to get that grant fund distributed uh, we've got about a year left on it at the moment we're looking to try and extend that out to another 18 months so do get in quickly if you are looking for a grant fund for your business and i'll talk to you a little bit more about that grant fund and what it means so in a similar way to the ones again that lorraine was talking about there's a 60 percent grant available towards the cost of your growth project so you as the sme business need to provide a 60 percent contribution so for example if you've got a ten thousand pound project to support the growth within your business we may be able to support you with a four thousand pound grant and the business provides the other uh, six thousand pound that match funding can be from a whole range of different sources as long as it's not from the eu our, our program support funding comes from the eu <clears throat> the grants can be for anything from two thousand pound up to one hundred and seventy thousand pound our average grants that we've been um, distributing at the moment come in at around about fourteen thousand uh, pound they can be used for a whole range of different things i'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment so but capital or revenue costs within your business so could be used and we have funded things like new plant and machinery so for example we supported an engineering company uh, a couple of months ago who had a 1950s lathe and uh well upgrading to a cnc machine so fairly substantial project and they got a fairly substantial grant towards that so it will help them to become much more productive and uh, create new jobs, uh, new skilled jobs to uh, operate those CNC lathes that they were putting in. It can be used for growth consultancy in whatever aspect that might be. So that growth might be uh, through working with someone to develop a strategic growth plan for you. It could be about working with someone with your generic business planning, could be around marketing. Uh, we've helped quite a number of businesses with marketing through websites, marketing strategies, branding, um, logo design, all these different aspects with regards to tangible marketing products. What we can't help with marketing is just printing leaflets, but websites we can help with. Leadership and management development. So we've had a number of businesses who have received a grant through us who have been supported with developing their leaders and managers. The UK uh, lags behind pretty much every other EU country on investment in leadership and management. And um, it's one of the key things that the government and research shows uh, that is stopping the UK being much more competitive on a European and global basis. So we can support leadership and management development of your teams there in your businesses. Software development, so perhaps a little bit key to uh, this digitization um, program of support that you guys are, are on at the moment. So we've supported a number of businesses with creating uh, bespoke CRM programs. Uh, we've supported businesses with subscribing to other CRM systems. We've supported um, inventory and stock control systems. Uh, so there's a whole range of sort of diff dig different software development and digital platforms that could support the growth of your business. And uh, we've also done some elements of supporting businesses with specialist IT equipment. So a whole range of different things that we can support your business with on that sort of digitization journey to create the growth within your organization. Some of the things we can't allow the money to be used for, so if you wanted to get a qualification, can't use it for that, can't use it for staff salaries, can't use it for upgrading retail premises or stock, normal day-to-day -day business costs. Um, so there's a whole sort of range of those sort of things, basic things through there. Uh, and a couple of other things, if you're, if you're thinking of uh, decommissioning a nuclear, a nuclear power station, our funding can't be used for that either. So, or nor can it be used for primary agriculture. So just, you know, just be aware of that. So the process, <laughs> Uh, I know Lorraine really stressed how much they support you through the process and we try to do the same with ours as well. So there is quite a bit of paperwork to fill out, but if you think you're, you will be accessing, potentially accessing that grant fund to help invest in the future of your business, it's worth the effort to go into it. So our delivery partners on our Access to Finance strand will help and support you uh, developing your knowledge and your abilities to fill out all the paperwork and get the paperwork in for the grant fund. 
So if you're looking for a large grant fund, and we class that as over £5,000, we like to, uh, we need you to fill out an expression of interest. Expression of interest will just give us a good overview of your business and your project idea. That gets reviewed by Brighton and Hove City Council, and they will just check that you as an organisation are eligible and what you're spending the money on is eligible as well. Um, if it's a small grant, we just go straight to the full application form, which is the next stage of the process. Uh, we carry out due diligence on your organisation and on your project. Again, this starts at the expression of interest stage, but just to make sure everything you're looking at spending the money on is, is allowable under the scheme, just to make sure that the business is a viable business going forward. We appreciate the challenges of the last 18 months. We do take that into account. We make sure you've uh, got all the paperwork in and we need to see cash flow forecasts, business plans, uh, previous two years set of accounts, current year set of accounts as well. So all sort of things you should have as a business in place, but we do understand not every biz business has those in place. And that's why our access to finance um, support partners can help you make sure you've got it all together. So uh, if that goes through, uh, the due diligence process, it goes to a grant panel where we discuss the application and make sure it sits within the project and what we're trying to achieve. And if you're successful, 90% of them are successful once they go to panel, uh, your grant contract is sent out to you. You spend the money on your growth project and then you claim back 40% of your grant um, based on evidence that you've received the goods and services you said you were going to in your project application form. We then make sure that you um, achieve all the outputs that you've said you'll achieve for growth, new jobs, those sort of things. So uh, what, what we look at on the application review, we make sure that you've got a cash flow forecast for the next two years. Uh, within that, has it got the jobs created, the project costs, the grant income, all those bits of detail that we need. Your last two years of accounts, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we need to make sure that that is all part of your business plan, that you've gone through the business planning process to show that you've got the, um, the growth plan within that. And then we'll review all of those different sections of it all and hopefully award you with your grant. So I did have some slides here with uh, some case studies, but I'll just read them out to you. So we uh, supported a couple of airline pilots who were uh, setting up a software platform in order to streamline the, the recruitment of airline, um, airline uh, pilots. And they've said that the grant they are awarded by the Invest4 panel has enabled us to invest in the technology that makes our website and applicant tracking system work more efficiently, which in turn means that we offer a service that is far more robust than other recruitment companies. So that's an organization called Select My Talent. So we helped them, them with a software platform. Roy Shin's Kefir Water. So Roy Shin runs a Kefir brewing business. We supported her. Um, with sales and marketing. So her comments were, crucially, they also helped me to successfully apply for a startup cash award from the Invest4 grant fund. That meant I could afford to employ a sales and marketing consultant, so consultancy, to promote my product and increase my customer base. The consultant has helped me to develop my branding and messaging, uh, giving a professional touch uh, to my product so I can compete with larger beverage manufacturers. A couple more examples. Um, a business called My Room Outside. There was a big growth in garden offices. So uh, this guy set his business up just before COVID. So uh, quite a good uh, good time. Obviously saw exponential growth in his business. And he states that a grant funding application was approved and was awarded cash for his marketing expenses, which meant you could afford to have a logo, a website, and a sales brochure designed and produced. The business is doing well. I've moved into a light industrial unit and set up a workshop within it. My website has launched, which is attracting more customers who see what we produce for our social media campaigns and click through onto our websites to find out more from us and make our, uh, make our inquiries uh, about our offices. So another area of digitization that you might be able to uh, get support with. And then just lastly, um, a chap called John Ollerenshaw, who started a business called Juice Up. Again, started just at the beginning of the lockdown period. Um, he was producing freshly um, squeezed juices from his home kitchen. 
um, as everybody went for the uh, home delivery um, options of, of, of getting their drinks and food during the COVID period, his business really grew exponentially and he was able to invest in an industrial sized juicing machine. Uh, so we supported him uh, with that, the, the purchase of an industrial juicing machine. So there's a range of some of the things that we support businesses with from lathes to software to websites to marketing and to machinery to make their businesses more, more efficient and more effective. So lots going on, lots available to you. It's not just about the grant funds. It is about the skills development to enable you to have much more effective, efficient, productive businesses that support our regional economy. And that full set of slides, although I didn't show them to you, I'll make sure they can be shared after the, uh, <laughs> after the event. Thank you, Gareth. I'm so sorry you had so many issues. But as Gareth just said, we will share his slides. We'll also share a recording so um you'll be you'll have two ways of picking up on what gareth's been talking about thank you so much and again are you happy to, to hang around for the networking gareth yeah absolutely yeah brilliant. thank you if you just turn oh brilliant he's done it um last but not least could i please invite karen um Tyrell up to the screen um karen's from coast to capital and she's going to talk about how you can actually access some free business support with our digital champions um those people who you've been hearing from week on um week on week and um, so Karen's going to talk us through that thanks so much Karen good afternoon everybody so um, I stand corrected I do have a slide deck that I can share uh, with the team after the event today but I'm unlikely to be going through the slide deck because I am well aware that my um, slot is keeping you between networking and lunch so um, my name is Karen Tyrrell I am one of the growth relationship associates um, with the Coast to Capital Growth Hub team um, I'm going to share my screen with you and just refer to our website as I talk through my presentation. So the Coast to Capital Growth Hub team are part of a network of 38 uh, growth hubs throughout the UK. And we are government funded, uh, fully funded to work with um, SMEs to unlock uh, potential growth within their business. Uh, we do that by um, a, a in a range of ways delivered through our a team of growth relationship associates. Um, I cover the West Sussex area um, along with my colleague NASA, who you'll be able to meet in the networking um, after our presentations today. And typically through a conversation with business owners, we talk about the challenges that businesses face um, and we then create a tailored package of support um, for that business. And that support can range from simple signposting to uh, partners that we work with, including Rise, Lowcase, Invest4. We also work with the DIT, Innovate, UK Edge and others. But uh, also the support might also include some of the um, programs that we run ourselves. So we do run a peer networking program. Um, we have an online digital training uh, coaching program um, and more importantly, we have a panel of 35 growth champions, all with a range of uh, different range of expertise um, that can provide a day's fully funded support with businesses. Um, and out of those, uh, that panel of 38 growth champions, we have um, seven digital champions um, who are here on this program um, and available today in the networking session afterwards to talk to you about how they can support your business and how you can access the free eight hours of support um, attached to this program. Um, you need to head over to our website to access the support. Uh, where you will find our Digital Champions page. Uh, there will be an overview of the programme and the types of support that you can um, access. And then scrolling down to the bottom of the screen is our lovely gallery of Digital Champions. Uh, as I say, they are available in the networking session this afternoon. I am just going to give a brief overview of each of one of them. And as you can see on the screen on our website, you can find out much more about their areas of expertise. So if you are looking for e-commerce support, then Malcolm Duffett is your man. Liaise with Lisa if you're looking to leverage Digitech to improve productivity and processes within your business. 
Ask Andrew about all things website, CRM, and how to use tech to build stronger customer relationships. Reach out to Rachel, an SEO expert, for support with marketing, planning, and tactical activity advice. Say hello to Susan if you're seeking digitally focused product and or service related initiatives. Reach out to Roya if you want to utilize digital to accelerate growth by building your digital value. And finally, why not rendezvous with Rob for director level and first-hand experience of digital transformation and how he can support your business through the whole process. So, as Cheryl has said, I'll be available afterwards for questions and thus concludes my presentation. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Karen. I love your intros to each of our digital champions. That was fantastic. Thank you. Um, and as Karen said, our digital champions are all available now for a little while in our networking um, session for you to chat to, as are our speakers. Um, all it remains for me to do is to say thank you so much to those of you who've attended all of our sessions or even to those of you who've attended just one of our sessions. We really appreciate it and um, we will be sending slides out, we will be sending recordings out. Please stay with us for networking. I'm going to pass over to Bradley who's going to talk about how we're going to network on the Remo platform. Thank you, Bradley. Brilliant. Thanks, Cheryl. And this is really for those that haven't, haven't used Remo before because it is a... Uh, a much more authentic uh, platform that gives you the ability to move around the room. So this is what you will go back into. This is the, the virtual lounge that we have um, today. And just a couple of points really about what how you can best utilize it. So the way that Remo works is everyone will appear on tables uh, like this as small circular icons. And um, you only see and speak to the people that are on your table. But if you want to move to another table, all you need to do is double click on another table and you will move there. So when you go back into the room, you'll just need to turn your camera and microphone on at the bottom of your screen. And then you will appear at the top, like you can see me uh, at the top of the screen. And then you can start to move around the room. One thing we're going to ask is the speakers from today, if you can find a table, um, so you're not on the same table together. If you can find your own table, there will be a couple of empty tables to utilize. If you find your way there, other people can then find your table and come and, and, come and chat to you. So this is really a chance to move around the room freely um, simply by using the Remo platform for what it's great for, and that is giving you that, that freedom. You'll also see the three boxes uh, with the Coaster Capital logo, the Business Hothouse logo, and the FreedomWorks logo. You can actually click on those as well. They are interactive boards, and you can find links out to those websites as well. But if you need any help, or if you have any questions about how the platform works, um, all you need to do is flag down uh, myself or Nikita. Uh, Nikita will be over on a help desk on the left-hand side, or just pop a message in the chat box, and we'll be happy to help. So. Um, we'll go back into that room now, um, and I don't think Cheryl has anything further to add, so we'll come out of this presentation mode, we'll go back into the room, and as I say, you'll just need to flick your camera and microphone on again, and you can get networking. Thank you. <laughs>